default points, points for penalties, <laughs> right? You win by turning the sheet upside down, right? The guy who's absolutely at the bottom wins because he's got most points, which means he's broken more laws than God. <laughs> I thought he got it, right? I, it wasn't that difficult to understand. So next thing you know, we're on the ramp. We're on the ramp. And uh, I was with my 18-year-old son who's been waiting for the Mila Mia for 18 years, right? So he was really cranky. This is now 25 Yes, yes. <laughs> and we're not even there. It's going to get much worse before it's going to get better. Much worse. Much worse. So I was going down the ramp like a bat out of hell. I'm, I'm a veteran. I've done this 11 times. I know that red traffic lights are there to be completely ignored. White lines on the road, you don't even look at them. Curbs, you take them at high speed, right? No problem at all. So I said to my son, I laughed and I said, we'll never see the Swedes again, right? They're, they're gone. But I have to admit, reluctantly, that it took about a mile or two when I saw two little yellow lights in my mirror. Here was Janaka, he had thrown his book away and he was driving like mad. I mean, like mad. So he, he got it, and when we left Brescia, I started driving on the wrong side of the road for a while, and then I really lost him. But again, he learned very quickly, and just maybe 50 miles out of Brescia, he was back. And then he thought he was in a race with me. But at the same time, and that was really the pathetic part, he was trying to get as few points, penalty points, as possible, and that's why he won. And I explained to him, <laughs> in his perception that is, and I explained to him, very low penalty points is for pussies, right? <laughs> so next year, next year when we're in the Milimea, because I can assure you, he and I are going to be competing again. Next year in the Milimea, you'll see him standing here, right? And he says, I won. I was 312 and Victor was 299, right? <laughs> Mark my words, this is going to happen. This is going to happen. So we, I did it within half an hour, right? But everybody gets it. It wasn't that difficult. <laughs> you really, it's, it's so nice. It's nice. Anyway, I would like to show you something. This is important. Ladies and gentlemen. And the power that we need is again you. We need your power, not only to spread the word about Saab and that the company is fine and here to stay, but also to get everybody, including yourself, to buy new cars. It sounds, it sounds in a way, you know, too simple to be true. But the only thing that stands between us and a successful, viable, profitable Saab is selling cars. This company is so well organized. This company is such a well-oiled machine that the only thing that stands between that and being really successful is selling enough product. And, and that's really where the power is that we need so much right now. And in order to facilitate that, we have devised let's say, a slight, um, let's say, incentive. And this incentive equals 12 and a half years of Saab or, or from North America membership fee. And um, this is just happens to be exactly that amount, but it wasn't conceived that way. It's just a slight way for Saab to tell you, thank you for supporting us the way you have. If you buy a new Saab, you remember today, 
we'll throw in $500 to facilitate the deal. Maybe that's not the decisive factor, but it's just something that is a token of our appreciation for your support when we so much needed, when you were the power, when we needed it. Thank you very much indeed.